using the jewel tool. Oh, there you go. So yeah, these you guys see these little bezel punch sets. You see that? It's not the most expensive kit, but I'm going to show you how to kind of give it a little jewel tool pizzazz and turn those babies into um, beautiful bezel burnishers. So you guys, today I'll be using the jewel tool flex shaft to burnish for me. Instead of using this with my palm and pushing, we don't do anything like that anymore. How many people are hand filing out there? Seriously. Um, we're going to use the flex shaft and since you guys, yep, that's a oh, the flex shaft is on special, you guys, by the way, because of this show. I thought I'd do something for you guys. So we are going to put right here the bezel. Oh, wait, no, you don't have to do that, but okay, there you go. Since our handpiece, the jewel tool handpiece, this red little one you see right here, is the only one that can open up its jaws and hold not one, not two, but all all of these sizes into this gear jaw piece because our hand piece will open up all the way to a quarter inch uh, width shank. Mm -hmm. You guys see that? Check it out. See how, you see how I put that in there? And then look, you just unscrew it and you can put another one in. Here, let's do the middle one right there. See how that fits in there too? Look at that. All of them fits in there beautifully. See that? Okay, so you guys, I'll show you guys how to do that and I'm going to show you guys how to polish the inside because, okay, yeah, so you guys see this? I'll show you the differences too. See how one's a little polished? This one on the right right here, this one right here. You see how polished that is? And this one is just straight from um, the factory. So majority of the time, you guys, when you guys are buying these punch sets you know there's so many different um oh wait wait before i go into this hold on let me say hi to everyone who's trickling in hey you guys <coughs> i'm gonna be working on setting a stone into this ring with the bezel punch set using our jewel tool flex shaft to burnish so you guys welcome you guys well everyone's just trickling in hi everyone we've got margaret we've got eva and we've got Linda and Claire and Janet. All of my peoples have arrived. And we've got Deborah and Karen. Hi, Fred. Oh, hey, Debbie Rogers. And hey, Heidi. Heidi, this one's for you, baby. Heidi's the one that instigated this demo today. I just want to give a shout out to Heidi. And we've got Barbara and Bonnie. Hi, y'all. And, and, and we've got Marge. James Wall, D did I miss Myra? Oh, okay, well, if she comes, I'll say. And then, hi, Holly, how are you? And we got James Wall, Steven, hi, you guys. Okay, you guys, it's going to be a pack filled day. Um, I'll get going quickly and show you guys all my little tips and tricks. So, back to what I was saying, you guys. I was saying that these little punch sets, you know, they're not the cheapest, you know, investment. You know, they range from about 145 to 150 to 200. Then I mean, you can go up to $275 on these punch sets. The d honestly, it's going to create a bezel, but the difference is on the finishing, how well they're finished. Because the better finished set you buy, um, you'll be getting a, b a cleaner uh, burnish. That's pretty much it. And I'll show you guys how to polish these nicely so like i was just showing you guys earlier there there's one here that i polished real quick and this is the one i'm going to be using and you can see right here the the smaller one is polished you guys see that that's going to give me a brighter burnish versus this one that just came from the factory it's not that it's used or anything it's just from the factory they don't bother finishing it so nicely and so you can even clean that up even more. I just did that like within two seconds. I said, hmm, why is it so dull? I've got to polish it to get a brighter finish. So you guys, let's get started. I'm so excited. So let me go ahead and start the process. So again, you guys, the, 
uh, the punch sets are a little pricey, but you don't need to get the most expensive. Okay, so you guys, let's get started. All right. Oh, by the way, you guys, guess whose birthday it is today? It's Yaro's birthday today. Happy birthday, Yaro. So that's uh, Yaro's been actually, <laughs> that's Yaro on the camera. Um, Yaro, uh, the reason why we're a little bit delayed today is we were trying to figure out the best possible camera angles with the best light so that I can show you guys exactly what I'm doing. You know how particular I am about making sure you guys see everything I'm doing so you guys can learn. This is not just a little Ani show here. This is an Ani show designed for you to learn and grab my techniques and apply them to your life. And you guys have been doing that. I'm going to share some pictures just a little bit later of all the amazing um, things I've been seeing you guys do as of just this week. So as you can see, you guys, I just, I have a a regular bezel and I've already created the seat in it. Good. Uh, everyone's saying happy birthday to you, Yaro. Yaro says thank you. Oh, he said thank you. Okay. So you guys, you guys can see here I've already put the seat in. Okay. Uh, and so I'm gonna now make sure this is so I don't have fancy equi I don't even know where half my stuff are. I can't even find the wood uh, wedge to put in here so it's just a it's, a, it's interesting so make sure it's nicely on your mandrel so i'm going to use my ring mandrel i'm going to try to stick it out as much as possible so you guys can see oh beautiful do you guys see that so this is what we're working with i'm going to keep it straight so now you just take your stone i'm gonna i actually don't even have my stone oh let me put it on this side that's why i didn't i was going to use the tweezer but so take a look at it really good. If that's sitting even, yeah, everything seems to look good, nice and even. So as long as your stone is flush, flush means completely even with the surrounding metal, like so the stone isn't like, er, like cricket. Oh, you can pull out, Yara. I'm trying to say. So you want to make sure the stone is level with the outside metal. You don't want the stone to be crooked. So this is your time <laughs> to make sure that that seat that you created is completely even. So um, I'm going to take one of my bezel punches here and you usually choose the one that's uh, just a little over the size of the stone um, and just make sure because this has to grab the metal around it and kind of push it and hug it around the stone. So you don't want something that's almost identical to the size of the stone. You see that? That's a no go. So, so you got to make sure you're touching the outer metal because it's not the stone that you're going to punch. And I'll show you the proper way to punch that. Um, I see a lot of people do some funky monkey things where they just give it a whack. Whoa, you guys, you might be able to whack a synthetic stone, but in my world, there's no whacking involved with a, a bezel. Oh my God, Debbie just said, woohoo, she just got this to come up on her TV. <gasps> that means you see every little nook and cranny, Debbie. Oh, okay, all right. So you guys, one thing I want to do is, okay, so just like I was saying here that you can zoom in, it's really, really dull, you guys. So before I start whacking anything or doing anything, I want to almost polish the inside of this. Why is my finger dirty? There you go. So you guys, I know I spring things on you guys and we're really like late to the party, but I actually had these felt wheels um, in stock. I had to, I used them back then during my metal smithing kit and I just went to my inventory and I said, oh my God, we have a bunch of these cone shaped felt bobs. Now my felt is very high quality and if you guys are interested I can put them on the website. I don't have a huge amount but they're excellent and you can shape these. So I'll show you real quick. I actually did the, uh, shape this one a little bit down because I wanted to get into that skinny one. Whenever you guys want to shape them I've told you guys this a gazillion times. Just take a piece of sandpaper. You know what I was doing? I found a piece of old stone that I used to use. Yes, yes. So tomorrow they will probably up be up on 
um, our website tomorrow. Both these two, wait, where is it go? These two sizes and some more sizes that I have. You guys see that? So again, if you want to shape this, you guys can definitely take a piece of sandpaper. That's a little too aggressive. You can just hold it on something hard and give it a nice little sand. You guys see how you can shape it to be really sharp? See that? that they're really lovely. So there, that's a little technique. Put some, oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna put some compound on it right now. So give yourself a good amount of compound like this. Here, let me do this so you can see it. See how you just give yourself a good amount of compound. Hold on, hold on to that. So give yourself a good amount of compound. Do you guys see how I saturated that? Okay, so now we're gonna just polish that tip just hold it in a spot. Don't go crazy and start rolling it around everywhere. Kind of work it a little. Let it do its magic. And that you can even spin the actual bezel around if you don't want to move the actual handpiece. Oh, so they are they are like the mini felt cones. They're all shaped like a little cone, a little torpedo, whichever one you want to call it. So look, you're going to see right now. So I'm just going to give it a zhuzh back and forth. You know, don't be afraid to apply some more compound if it's not working, but it's pretty good right now, you guys. I'm just going to zhuzh it back and forth, kind of make sure I get the full surface up and down. You guys see that? Oh, this is a rough one. Okay, here, I'll, I'll lower my left hand a little. So I'll work a little awkwardly. Thank you, Yaro. So just clean it up. It's very, very rough in here. So. No. So let me go ahead and clean it up. Oh, heavens, it's so dirty in here, you guys. Oh, this was definitely more of a task than that other one. This is a bigger, but do you guys see how it's going to get more and more polished? Wow. I feel like I'm making a new tool. Reminds me of the punch set we uh, sharpened yesterday. Boy, I should just get into the tool making business, you guys. These guys just don't know how to finish things. Okay, so there. I want to clean. I, I, I'm doing this method of going up and down to kind of smooth the lines that are ha that have been bored in there. Does that make sense? Does that does that show off, Yaro? Oh, hold on. Oh yeah, there you guys see how shiny it is in there, right there. So that kind of killed a lot of the sharper edges that were in there. You guys see that? Because look at this is what it looks like. Always, whenever you're gonna lean, turn off your flex shaft, you guys. So this is what we're talking about. So you get much more of a polished edge, I mean inside. So what's happening is these are very, sh like kind of really rough and these are, the now it's more of a smoother finish because I want to show you guys, earlier I used this on this. You guys see, Yaro, can you just zoom in here? And I, and I just want to show you guys, even though I, I did this, it's still a little rough. Wait, sorry guys. Hold on. You see how rough that is? Yeah, can you zoom in? Oh, so you guys see how rough that outer bezel is? So if now that I have a polished uh, bezel, I'm hoping that I'll get a smoother finish. So we might revisit this back again. But so let's keep going on. Wow, they look so pretty now in comparison to this. Look at that. Like they're so much more shinier. This is the old one. And then these are the shiny ones. So let's get started. Let me put these back. Okay, so I am choosing the larger one, you guys. And okay, so one thing I noticed is a lot of people take some of these and take a huge hammer and give it a huge whack and an another whack. You know, again, you guys, like I said, if you're using this, if you, <laughs> Margaret, you guys cracked me up. Margaret said, you are in the tool making business, LOA. I know, honestly, you guys, if I just put my 
um, ma manufacturing hat on. I'll be blowing these things out. These little ring makers and everything. I can do all of this stuff so easy. Um, of course, you guys, I would find something that is more complicated, that meets, needs more education, and I invented the jewel tool. I could have stuck to things like this, Easy peasy, but no, Ani had to go and create a whole new segment, a whole new market right here. Anyways, so I'm going to show you guys the, the way I know how to set a bezel. So I'm not using a huge hammer, just a light little chasing hammer. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I still am going to use a scratch eraser after it's set. Someone just mentioned that. But I'm going to show you guys the full scope. So just watch what's going to happen. So again, you guys, I'm going to hold this lightly here. You guys see that? And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it, tap, tap, tap while rolling it around like this. Yeah. So Holly asked a good question. Holly said, are the lines in here for grabbing the bezel? No. The, the, the lines inside the bezel are not, the lines just in the inside the bezel are just how they bore it, honestly. They're not for grabbing the bezel. If anything, it's more of like a cone shape. So that cone is going to push the metal down. And as you see, what I'm going to do is, um, honestly, I would even use a maybe a mini scratch eraser to smooth that all in there. But we're not going to go there right now. Let's just keep going. So again, you guys, right here, I'm going to make sure it's the larger size. I chose the larger size. And I'm going to tap, 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 and roll around. So look, watch this. You're going to tap, 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 and roll around. You guys see that? I think I'm good. Take a look at it. Okay, so d can you get a close-up shot of this, Yara? Hold on, let me find my little... Okay, I'm going to tilt this forward. Okay, do you guys see how now it's hugging... Wait, where am I? How it's hugging the stone. Okay, it's a little on the rough side, so that's why we're going to need to burnish it to smooth it. So right now we have the stone in there. Always check it push it back and forth. Yes, it's tight in there. Yes. But did you guys see how, again, you guys, I did the tap, tap, tap motion. Just tap, tap, tap. So this is bringing me back to um, settings. Like there's, so don't go be doing this. Bam. I've seen many people do that, you guys, and I just cringe. If this was like a, you know, $2,000 diamond, you wouldn't be going whack because the slightest little wrong would crack that stone. So I know you guys are working sometimes with synthetic stones, so it's okay. But, you know, there's times where you guys have a genuine stone in there and you don't be wanting to whack stuff like that. So that's a no-no. So now, you guys, I am going to now take this off real quick. Switch this off. I'm doing this just for speed, you guys. So. This is how you put a flex shaft on, by the way. You lightly turn the jewel, the jewel tool on, so the paddle kind of has to find a little click. You guys see how now it's rotating up on the top? You guys see that? So now you just push it in, okay? So turn it off. Yes, so yes, a tube setting is really easy, you guys. You just got to create the seat. So right here, is where I'm going to lock it in. Hold on. Oh, there it is. So just go ahead and tighten it. So you guys got to remember, the jewel tool is the, the, is the only hand piece. I don't want you guys to think, and I'm not trying to sell my hand piece. I just want to tell you guys what it is, the truth. This hand piece that I'm holding is a design that only I, jewel tool, manufacture, hands down. There's no if ands, or buts. There's no anything. No other flex shaft manufacturer, handpiece manufacturer makes this tool. So if you guys want to put these in a flex shaft, know that you're going to need my jewel tool handpiece. You say, I already have a jewel tool for them. I don't need another handpiece. Well, to do this, you do. 
so yeah, you just need you this so this opens um, all the way to a quarter inch and it'll fit any size um, thereafter, all the way to you know a point uh, millimeter. Yeah, 0.5 millimeters. So you guys see that? So I'm going to get going. So let's do this. Let's run this at slow speed. Okay. So wait, before I start, so my objective is right here. You guys, I'm going to put it on top. Actually, let me do this here so you guys can see better. You guys see that? So I'm, what? No, no, it's actually better for me because I don't have full range of motion. It's hitting up against the bench. So I'm going to go like this. Yes. So, yes. So I'm using the same um, punch that I used to tap, tap, tap to burnish it. So I chucked it in the dual tool hand piece. And now I'm just going to turn it on a slow speed and just go like this. So instead of, yes. So normally, you guys, I this is saving like a lot of wrist and hand action. So normally you'd have to open up this. Ah, uh, who said that? Heidi, thank you. Yeah, Heidi, Heidi. Heidi said my handpiece is a game changer. It truly is a game changer. It changes the game, really. I know it sounds so stupid what I just said, but it's true. The game has now been changed. So before you guys, just so you know, you'd have to chuck this in here and twist this uh, tight. Hold on, let me tighten it. Okay. And you'd have to do this all by your wrist and pushing. There's a lot, and there's a little slipping, pushing, all sorts of things would happen. So, you know, again, I always tell you guys, save your wrists, save your hands. You have only one. You got one of each. God gave you one of each for the rest of your life. So be nice to them and save them. So remember, I always tell you, why are you hand filing? Why are you doing this? this falls into that yes 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 so you so there you go all right so thank you Heidi is who you should say to Heidi actually figured this out and shared this with me so I'm going to run this at about I want to say slow speed but not super slow kind of give it something you want it to be burnishing and smoothing stuff down so hold the flex shaft where you can work it like a little pen and you're going to go directly on the stone, kind of hold it there. And so you're just going to hold it off on the side and give it a little roll. Just slowly roll. And that's going to do all the work for you. So instead of you using your wrist, your hand, your palm to do all this, you know, and you can go in the other direction, whichever floats your boat. And everything should be nice and smooth. Give it a nice little whirl. And that's, wow. Wow. I'm, I, oh, wow. Wow. I, I'm impressed, you guys. This is very clean. So hold on. Let me show you even up close. Turn the jewel tool off. Wrong way. So you guys, hold on. Really wedge that in there. See, this is why I mean I love my hammer the one with the sharp edge because it just whacks things right off. So you guys, let's take a look at this. Okay, so this is a perfect example. Let me get some, <laughs> I still got the compound on it. So this is a perfect example of what I was talking about of how to get a shine. And we're gonna compare it with the yellow one that I did before cleaning it up. So right here, look at the finish. Hold on, where am I? Where am I? Hold on. Yeah, I want to do this first so they get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so do you guys see how cleaner that edge is, the bezel? I'm going to go all the way around right there. I could have pushed in a little. Let me see if there's a little bit more meat here. No, it's actually as much as it's going to hug as much as it can. I'm looking at it. Okay. So that's, that's how the bezel is going to be. Now, you guys, let's look at the one I used before I cleaned the, before I polished the bezel puncher. Look at the two differences. This one is, hold on, let me move this. I'm trying to keep it st stable, y'all. 
So this is so much r rougher, the yellow one. I don't know, can you see it, yeah, in the picture? It's so hard to see. Hmm? Yeah. Be well, you can really see it under... Yeah, maybe the overhead camera will show it better. But anyways, let's go ahead. So, you guys, from here, listen, from here we can go straight to the polish, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Oh, so I'm going to show you guys two things. Okay, guys, so if it's in a really tough area and it's not easy to get your disc around it, like say you have a special setting and you really want to use the scratch eraser, to clean the bezel but it's really tight know that you guys we have the scratch erasers in the small mini we call them the mini scratch erasers and this is great to put on your flex shaft let's say to clean it up and then again if it's hard to get into a polish don't forget we have the same felt wheel that i used in the same size as the scratch eraser to polish so if you guys have a hard to reach area you can use the same products I'm going to use right now on the big jewel tool machine, on the see-through disc. But if it's a really tight area, know that those same wheels are available. We call them the mini felt and the mini scratch eraser, just so you know. Ah, thank you so much. It's true. If you have the jewel tool, and it's saving you all this time why would you do everything like by hand and then she says she follows with i didn't know the jewel tool can do ever all of this a lot of people have been saying that you know there's only so much i can show at a show you know what i mean everyone sees what the jewel tool does i try my best at showing everything but at the end of the day it does a lot you guys that's why you guys have to understand that's why you'll find me at a woodworking show you'll find me at the national hardware show you'll find me at the SEMO, 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 SEMA Auto Show. You'll see me at high-end fine jewelry JCK shows. You'll see me at glass shows. You'll see me at the Denver, you know, gem and mineral show. Because all these industries, the jewel tool can adapt to. And there's so many different applications for every single industry. So one thing I've been loving hearing from you ladies out there is, Yes, you guys are getting to town and cleaning and polishing hammers, anvils, uh, rusted things. But then I hear, and then sharpening your knives and sharpening your ceramic knives. Oh, if you guys haven't watched some of my videos, everything I just mentioned has been covered in the last <coughs> few days and few weeks. Um, secondly, people are telling me that their husbands are getting wind of all the things the jewel tool can do and now they want a set for themselves to work and sharpen their tools so i've known this all along but i'm glad you guys are you know jumping in <gasps> diana Diana, I know Diana. She, uh, I can totally see Diana saying this. Diana, you are adorable. Diana said she just spent hours s hand setting these stones just two days ago. And she's like, oh, I'm hating life. I, uh, you just did in a few seconds what it took me uh, uh, hours to do, a couple hours to do, she said. So, you guys, I'm here to help. I'm really here to help. And whatever I can, I, I will do. I told the same thing to Heidi. When Heidi mentioned to do the hand punch, I'll go, Heidi, tell me what I have to do and I'll show you guys. So I love you all. I'm here for you. Okay. So what I did was right now I put the very fine scratch eraser on. So I chose the very fine, you guys, instead of the fine because this is going to give me, you know, the bezel, first of all, is not, let me zoom in, you guys. Yeah, so a lot of you guys do have the fine. You see this? It came in majority of your metalworking kits. Unless you bought like a fancy kit that came with the whole assortment, the very fine is something that I really recommend. I know mine is like a little shoddy, but when you first get it, it looks like this. Yes, so the <laughs> who said that? 
Yeah. So Heidi, yeah, Heidi said, so wait, before I say that, so this is the very fine one. It's very, it looks very similar to the fine, but it's going to give you a finer finish. And especially if you're a little concerned about how much metal, you know, especially if it's a thin bezel and you just want to smooth it, I highly recommend adding the very fine to your arsenal. I really do. Okay. And so Yaro actually put it on the screen if you guys are looking for it. So these are the two that I worked on. Let me go ahead and show you guys this. So just by feeling here, the pink is the one that I used with the polished burnisher. You guys see that? Okay. And the yellow is the one I did without, oh, you can feel it. You, c you can even, oh yeah, it's rough. Yeah, it's rough. So you just by feeling alone, I can, look, you can even see my nail catching it right there. And this is like super smooth right there, super smooth. So I am going to use the very fine on both, doesn't matter. But since we just did this, let's sh finish this up. So run this at full speed. And you guys, if you guys can't see the bezel, you know, don't be afraid to put a little black mark around it because it is very tiny. I got to give you that. Very, very tiny. So don't be afraid to kind of mark where you want to work if you're having trouble seeing. I know you guys have those fancy glasses and stuff, but for the most part, just to find a good, like where you are, so just hold it and roll. There you go. Can you guys see how smooth that's going to be? Oh, wait, let it focus, Yara was saying. I know, I'm very close. Hold on. It's not focusing, Yara. Oh, there you go. You guys see how smooth that is now? Just a real quick zippity doo da. You can roll over it. I like to roll over things. But the very fine, if you're really scared, is going to be your best friend, I tell you. And there you go. See how smooth that is? Oh, let me go ahead and let it focus. I know I have. I know, right? The uh, Heidi, I love you. Yeah, Heidi, I didn't notice that. See, just put things my direction, and I will definitely give you guys my tips. <laughs> Heidi goes, I definitely need to polish the inside of my bezel. Yes, punches. Because Heidi showed me a picture of hers, and Heidi, I swear, it looks identical to the one that I have here. So this is my felt wheel. Remember, I mentioned yesterday to make sure your felt has a little bit of glistening. So do you guys see the copper that's here? This is from these that we polished yesterday. If you guys missed the sharpening of the disc cutters yesterday, know that I polished and cut these out. And if you guys want to see how I did that, um, see we cut them out and we sharpened the these disc cutters. This was yesterday's show. You guys, I know this is just a, yeah, so there you go, there you go, different sizes, yeah, I have three hands. So we actually sharpened the heads of these disc cutters, and they cut so much cleaner than the others, so I'll go ahead and get rid of that, thank you. So, y you're okay to leave it with a shine is what I want to say, so don't clean your felt wheel if it looks shiny like that. So give yourself a good amount of compound, just a little zhuzh, one little shot, and now all you're going to do is roll it. Just a quick little roll, and you guys see you get that polish. <coughs> there you go. Let me make sure I got all of that out. And there we go. That should do it. Yeah, it won't damage the stone, you guys. I mean, hold on. I think that's good. Hold on, I don't know, I can't see. Let me, hold on, let me double check. I'm gonna look it with a loop. Oh yeah, that's clean. Actually, let me clean this side just a little bit more. Yeah, super zoom, good, super zoom in on me. There you go. Okay, there. I'm actually going to go clean up the sides. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to polish the sides too. Just to give you guys a full scope of what you can do. You know, if it's just the top you need, then that's fine. 
other than that, that's pretty good. Okay, let me clean it. Let me wipe it down so you guys can see everything. There you go. Did you guys see that? Did that show nicely, super clean? Oh yeah. So look, I don't know if you guys can see this, but look at how clean that edge is. Okay, well there. Hold on, give us a second. We're zooming in. Yara really wants to zoom in. There. It's progressive, guys. Sorry. It's a really close zoom. It's okay. They, c they can see. Oh, there it is. You see how clean it is? And then you guys can take, if you don't want any compound around it, this is a great opportunity to take your magic buff and give it a quick little polish. So how awesome is that? Super nice, huh? No compound, no nothing. Look at that. There you go. And there you go, you guys. See how quick and easy that was. Just super quick. And then, so, wow, that came out really pretty. Very nice. Clean, nice and flush. We're good to go. All that good stuff. So, yeah, it takes it to a whole other professional level. And, again, even if you have a lumpy, bumpy bezel, too, like this one was a little on the rough side, okay, still, I'm going to still grab the very fine, you guys. And I'll show you guys how to smooth that over as well. So go ahead and darken it. You see? Yeah, this is the very fine. Okay, so again, I'm going to just turn it on full speed. So find where you are. Oh, you're right there. Okay, now just roll back and forth nice and smooth. You don't have to do this a lot. Just the one little two passes is all you need. This one kind of spread out some extra. I saw it last time. So there you go. Beautiful. Nice and smooth. Oh. There it is. There it is. Nice and focused now. You guys see how clean that is? Let me just double check with my loop. Yes. Ah, thank you. Negotiator gave me an ear plus today. All of you guys are saying it looks professional. It really does look professional, you guys. That's the that's the objective, you guys. You know, this is not a game you're playing. Like this is some, you know, the that punch set first of all is not cheap. You know, it's an expensive game if you're, you know, but your your uh, your finishes should look high end is what my objective is, you guys. The finishes definitely should look high end. That's all. You know, and to get you to those finishes, we don't want you to be suffering, long suffering, you know, to get them all done. You want to do it quick, easy, peasy, finished. Hold it there? I can't really hold it in a spot. Okay, Yara's focus. Yara's doing my camera overhead. It's okay. You don't have to get that close, Yara. People can see it. There. I'll go ahead and do that, too. There you go. You don't have to get that close. They can see it, Yara. It, just zoom out a little, Yara. Yes. So, negotiator is right. This is how you get the maximum price for your jewelry, you guys. Really and truly. And, you know, you guys, here, I should have showed you guys this, too. Um, these are great because these have solder marks. I mean, not solder mark. Yeah, the areas where that were soldered. So just to show you guys how to remove those, 
I'll just put the very fine back on again, okay? The scratch eraser. I'll put my fingertips on. Aw, you guys are so sweet. I'm listening to all your comments. Oops, sorry, that fell. Yes, Susan, you're, I love you, Susan. You're so cute. Um, What's it called? It's a tool junkie. Okay, so anyway, so let me just show you. Yeah, yeah, so let's just show you guys real quick. I'm going to just remove the, the solder. So this was the soldered area. So if you're going to clean up a solder, watch this. And I'm going to show you guys some other things. Watch. So you guys see, I was able to clean that up. But since it's round, you guys, you see how in here I can't get to? Oh, palm. You guys still see in there, I can't get to, hold on, there's like a little bit of a solder joint still. I mean, you can kind of feather it in like this. That's also a technique I have. You guys see that? I was able to accomplish that. Yes, so who, who asked that? Okay, Janice Kramer just asked something. So Janice asked if I can use the hammer hand piece on the jewel tool flex shaft. So you guys, I actually spoke to the president of Fordham. So like I went ahead and cleaned that off and you can polish it. So I went ahead and spoke to the president of Fordham and he's so funny. Okay, you guys, I just want you to know I'm very good friends with him. And he's like, oh, Miss Facebook YouTube star. <laughs> I'm like, stop. <laughs> and I told him that I want to show how to hammer on the uh, we're using my flex shot and basically you guys i'm a fordham dealer i don't know if you guys know this but i sell everything fordham and i always told you guys if you ever need something just let me know um so he basically told me what do you want just send me an email and i'll send it to you and i've been so busy you guys to ask him what hammer hand pieces and which ones i want but i promise today i'm gonna do it so next week, I should probably get it in, and I will show you guys how to hammer a stone using the hammer hand piece. And I'll tell you this, straight from Fordham's mouth, from Mike, actually, his wonderful sales guy that's been around for, I want to say, almost 40 years. He'll kill me if it was less. But for the most part, he's the one that told me that, um, oh, yeah, I had a hammer hand piece here. What happened to it? It's in my drawer. Ah, there you go. This is my hammer hand piece. But I want to show you his full collection. So I just don't want to just use this. So he says that when you put this on your flex shaft, so remember I told you guys, you just remove this like so. And then you can totally put something like this on here. You guys see that? It just will automatically click right into there. And there, that's a Fordham hand piece. You see how you can totally use something else on here so that's that we turn this off so you guys i will show this next week hopefully there's a lot coming there's a lot coming everyone wants to be on my show so they're throwing stuff at me so i will show you guys but he told me wait, wait let me not get off track he told me that using the jewel tool speed and consistency is ideal for the hammering process with their flex uh, with their handpiece because number one, the jewel tool is going to give you a consistent speed. It'll lock it in one speed so you don't have the variations with a foot pedal or anything because I have the little knob that just locks it in. You just turn it on and it'll set a speed. You know what I mean? You just set a speed and that's it. So that's that. Secondly, the speed in which the jewel tool runs is ideal for the speed of the hammer. Whereas the flex shaft that hangs, you know, it's very high RPM and it ranges so just so you know it's an ideal um, tool to use with a hammer hand piece the jewel tool okay so let me put that back down and i was polishing you guys the yeah i was just i was removing the the solder marks okay there i removed the solder mark right here the solder seam right there and I actually got in pretty good with that 
inside right there. But let's say that you, you didn't get so good and you really want to use a scratch eraser. So this is what I was telling you guys, to use the mini one. If you use the mini right now, it would get in there. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So let me do two things. So you can use, there's like two roads to take. I lost my, the pink stone, the pink ring fell. No, 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 it's not. It's not this one. The pink ring fell. Um, so it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I have the, yeah, this one. I'm just showing how to do the shank. They already saw it. So look, you guys. So from here, if I want to use the scratch eraser, let me show you how to properly use it. Give me a second. Let me remove this. And let me turn this on. So it always is best to turn the handpiece on a little when you're putting this. So we can the flex shaft, yeah. So let me turn this and let me put this on. Give me a second, you guys. Real quick. So I'm going to take the little felt mounted tip. Who said that? Margaret, it's true. I feel I feel bad for Yarrow. Margaret says, poor Yarrow, he has to work on his birthday. I know. And you guys don't know how mean I was. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Kristen's laughing. She's laughing because I'm like, I know it's Yarrow's birthday and we're supposed to be really nice to someone on their birthday. But I aim to please and I want to make sure everything looks good for you guys. And so he was setting up camera angles and I was getting so angry. <laughs> so... I just want you to know Yarrow <laughs> has had some birthday so far. So you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, magic screw, the mini scratch eraser to do the inside soldering, to clean the inside soldering. Oh, you hold on. I'm going to turn this on at full speed. Ready? Okay. So can you see this, Yarrow? Hold on. Wait, wait. Okay. So that hand doesn't work. How about if I do this? Can you see this? Hold on, let me just show you what it looks like. How about that? No, it's okay. You don't have to need another camera angle. They can see the solder joint. Do you guys see it? It's in there. Do you guys see that solder joint right there? Oh, it's right here. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong solder. I don't even see what I'm doing. The solder joint is right there. It's off to the side, right there. Right there. That's where the solder joint is, you guys. Okay, Yara wants to try the other camera. Wait, where am I? Oh, shoot. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, you guys can see the solder right... It's the solder is right there. Whatever. Here, let me do this. There you go. So the solder is right there. So this is great at cleaning the... Now you can get to the sides. And this is way better than a rubber wheel. Oh, my God. You don't understand. I have so many rubber wheels on this bench, I despise them. And there you go, you clean up the solder mark, super smooth. I know. It's true, I know. I actually said sorry, I was so mean. So you guys see how you guys get rid of that solder mark? I'm trying to stay in the camera angle. This is so hard to do. There, you guys see how smooth that is now? Mm -hmm. There's no seam. Just stay, in area. Just stay in my tongue area. It's true. We are trying to be nice to Yarrow. So that's pretty much it, you guys. I'm kind of being a little redundant. We. Oui. I I know. I'm the I'm the one that's mean. <laughs> so there you guys go. And then again, if you guys now there's two ways you can polish the inside. You can use our mini felt right here, or you can put the inside ring mandrel whichever floats your boat well you got to go on this camera hold on let me move the little bezel so i expose you and uh, so you can either use the mini felt wheels on the flex shaft or you can move to the um the ring mandrel there you go oh hold on. shoot i don't have the vacuum see look you guys see all the dust flying when you don't have a vacuum you guys see that so if you guys do have a vacuum and you are working with the ring mandrel and it's already hooked up to your jewel tool, just remember, this is, <laughs> you can have two jewel tools. That's right. Have two jewel tools, everybody. So let me turn the vacuum on. Okay. So remember how I was showing you, where is that? 
Look at how it sucks all the, nothing's flying at me. Just real quick, give yourself a good amount. This is what I wanted to show you guys. You see how it's getting everything? Oh yeah, baby. Okay, so give yourself the good amount of compound and get it in there. And this is a little ring too and it's, Yes, so just stay tuned for the Hammer Hand Piece show. You guys are hilarious. So, I don't know, can you guys see the polish there? <laughs> yeah, so the Hammer Hand Piece show will be coming up, you guys. I promise you. You guys see that? Hold on, I gotta fix my earpiece. There, so, there's a lot of shows coming your way. I'm gonna even show you guys some other products that I love and show you guys how to use them. So I'm really working on some awesome, you guys see, it just got rid of the solder mark and it's polished. And so you can go and polish the rest. Oh, my hand, my, my ear thing slipped off. <laughs> I love it. Yarrow said, who's Tom said that? Tom said, Yarrow, take the rest of the day off with pig. That's right. Don't worry. I'm not going to make Yarrow work a lot today, I promise. So where am I? Okay, so I'm just going to polish this all the way nice and even. You guys see that? Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. A shop vac would be perfect, you guys. Who, if you don't have a JT a Jewel Tool vacuum yet, you guys, a shop vac is perfect too. So it's just a little on the loud side, Kristen says. So there you go. That's the one that I took the. You guys see that? So pretty. There's another side. Oh, Lord. There we go. Nice and smooth, and again, you can polish this with the magic buff, but you guys get the idea, right? Okay, so listen, people. So we don't we don't have the scratch eraser in the ring manual. You guys see up, but we have the mini scratch erasers. I can't get 3M to make it for me you guys it's just a difficult process to form this material in a cone shape that's the problem you guys so so right now yeah get off uh, get off okay so right now you guys i have the mini scratch erasers that go on a flex shaft and it comes as a set of three one comes mounted already for you and then you get another set of three loose ones. Two loose ones. Yes, so that's the problem. You can use a shop bag. The hose is actually designed to accommodate, you know, at the size of a shop bag, the diameter. The vacuum port. The vacuum port. Whatever, the hole. Um, but the only problem is, is, so our hole is an inch and three quarters. Yes, so our hole is an inch and three quarters, just so you know. But majority of the shop backs that I've seen and used, they all slide right onto the hole of the jewel tool. It's just loud. Oh, wow, interesting. Why is your, someone says their shop back hose is too small. Oh, it's a small shop back, we heard. Oh, apparently Yara only gets the big fancy, no, he doesn't get a fancy one. There was one that was at Costco for like, Okay, so here's a tip. The 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 vacuum the vacuum what is what's out of stock? Okay, so Kristen's gonna check. Someone just mentioned that the mini scratch racers are out of stock. They're not. We just got a shipment in from 3M, so um we, we need to update that. So Kristen's on that right now. So so she will check that out. So they're not out of stock, I can assure you. Um Secondly, Yarrow said, here's a tip for the shop vac. If you get anything like it's a five gallon uh, or more size, 
It's the perfect size usually for the hose, the adapter to fit into the jewel tool hole right here. So you guys, just so you know, um, that's usually the standard, uh, they usually fit no problem as long as it's a five gallon plus size. Yeah, um, so the yeah, so the outer diameter is an inch and three quarters, that's true. Okay, so we've got that done, we got this. However, I gotta find my pink ring. No, I know, it's not the one, that was the yellow one you gave me. Watch. That was the yellow one, so it's okay. Who cares, we did both. So I'll find it. So we went ahead and used this, you guys, with the punch. I hope that helped you guys tremendously. I know you guys have been waiting this. Um, there was something else I had to show. God, you know, after the show's over, I'm like, darn it, I forgot to show this. Is there anything I'm forgetting that anyone had asked? Nice. Who said that? Janice. Janice, you're coming up with some good ones today, honey. Janice said her husband asked her, quote, what tool do you need next? Janice responds to her husband and says, I have the jewel tool. It does it all. So it is, it is, a, it is a fun little tool. It really does do it all. I'm telling you, you know, if you start off with one jewel tool machine to do just like metal polishing, and let's say you got a little kind of interest in stone lapidary well guess what you don't have to buy a whole other machine you guys know that you just buy the little wheels the lapidary add-on kit and then da -da, you have a whole lapidary system so your metal polishing system that not only polishes it files for you it shapes for you it does detail work and it burnishes for you and polishes and then you get a lapidary system to boot and then wait wait there's more if you want to try your hand at resin polishing or polymer clay, Ta -da! there's another uh, wheel kit for that. You guys know that. Let's say for enamel. If you already have a lapidary kit, you don't need the enamel kit. It just goes on and on and on, you know, and the sharpening. Oh, let's not get started. You guys, just remember, we did those disc cutters yesterday. You guys all thank me for this. Honestly, you guys, again, I'm going to say it again. You don't, the only thing that you're going to get with like the more expensive disc cutters, um, it's not you're going to get a sharper, cleaner cut. No, you, we proved this to be wrong. Swanstrom uh, disc cutter is the top of the line. It's so well balanced, you guys. I see a lot of people, I wanted to bring this up too. I see a lot of people who have, I don't want to give the name, but they have another brand, which is quite popular because of the price. But for the most part, I notice that a lot of people, when they're putting in the, let's say, oh, hold on, let me get, give me a second, you guys. Oh. The, the mini scratch erasers are in a fine. So right here, you guys. So when I did this, you guys, you guys see how it locks in? So not only does it lock in, it locks in really uniformly. So some people I see put another piece of metal on the other side to kind of shimmy it to keep it balanced. Um, you with the Swanstrom, you guys, since it is well made, that's what you're getting. You're getting the construction of it and the engineering. You don't have to compensate for the defects at all. So just be mindful when you're spending your money. Um, that's what you're kind of spending the money on. It's not about the sharp edge because you can sharpen that even better than factory with the jewel tool because you're using higher quality abrasives. So you get a finer, finer finish and you can cut your debt. No, Diana, you would use that kit for, so she asked if, Diana asked if she can use the metal polishing kit for uh, precious metal clay. The answer is yes, a big fat yes. The only thing is I would recommend with precious metal clay, I mean, it's wonderful. It has the grinding element. It has the cleaning, smoothing, magic scratch eraser element to smooth everything. Um, and it has one of the green polishing brushes. But if you're working on metal clay and you wanted to get into the nooks and crannies, um, one we did a metal clay piece not that long ago, but let me show you one second. We just did this one. And I showed like how to clean into the nooks and crannies. You remember this piece back in the day? 
So to get into all those edges, you guys see that edge right there that's polished right there? Um, I, or to get even to nooks and crannies, you would have to use the brushes. So I would say that, oh here you are, you don't have to zoom in that much. <laughs> it's been thrown in the pile. So I would say that to add only the brushes, like the brushes that I'm talking about are here. Yara, can you pan in for the brushes? So I'm talking about these brushes. So the one that you get in that kit is the green, and I would recommend, you know, at least this, the, like adding some more heavier duty ones to get into the nooks and crannies, depending, you know, to get into, to polish into those nooks and crannies. Because I know a lot of people, when it comes to metal clay, they love to stamp. They love to put some kind of pattern on it. And so just be mindful that it'll do all of this beautifully. This is precious metal clay. You know, polished it pretty. You guys remember when we did this? Yeah, it's so pretty. It's just been thrown. Um, but yeah, that that's it. You just polish it. What else we got? So I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I did the punches. I did. I'm just trying to remember. You guys had shoot. Oh my God, you guys. I am up. To if you guys know this, you know that I'm like I'm I'm like up in the wee hours of the night answering stuff on Instagram, on Facebook, and they're like, "Is this Ani?" And I'm like, "Damn right it is. It's me. Who else is gonna be up awake, uh, awake doing this?" But honestly, you guys have shot me so many questions and answers, and I try to get to you. Um, and yeah. That's that's all I got today. Hope you guys enjoyed today. So be stay tuned tomorrow. I don't know what I'll do. Maybe we'll continue some stuff. I don't know. Give me some ideas, you guys. I'm open to your feedback, you guys. Listen, if you want to see something out of the ordinary, put your little thinking caps on and say, hmm, I wonder if Ani can do that. You know, the the quote go floating around is, what would Ani do? So just look around your shop and ask. <laughs> yeah, Heidi. What's up, Heidi? Heidi has a question. Oh, so Heidi says that first she sharpened her disc cutters. Yay, ding, 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 ding. Went ahead and made discs. And if you guys don't know what we're talking about, she made discs just like so. And so when she was polishing it, just like I'm polishing, she said that she got scratches on it. So I'm going to say that, Heidi, you shouldn't be getting any scratches. There could be something lodged into your felt wheel that you need to get rid of because there should be no scratches. The only thing you should see, no, it's her felt wheel she was talking about. Yeah, the flat buff. So the only thing you should see is the finest, 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 finest rub marks from the felt. And that you take off with the fluffy buff. So let me show you real quick. Let's do a quick overhead pan because... Yes, yes. So someone asked if we're going to do bypass scissors. I have a whole bunch of gardening stuff. I have the bypass scissors sitting around here so yeah let me plan maybe i'll do those tomorrow so you guys stay tuned there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot to do apparently there's a lot you can do i'm even learning things i can do on the jewel tool so yes so stay tuned you guys for sharpening the bypass scissors and more i have a lot more you guys it's just so it's just a lot I, i'm working on it i'm doing my best you guys so just to answer heidi's question so to polish this okay so look at my felt wheel Okay, this is what you want to have it look like. So this is just a regular the disc uh, disc that we stamped out yesterday. And when I mentioned that to polish it to do it in sections, you shouldn't have. So I did say section one, so section two, section three, and then you just work around and maybe four. Okay, and then bring it all together. So just let me could do a quick recap. That's what I'm here for, you guys. Let me do this real quick. So <coughs> let me go ahead and give myself a good amount of compound. So I know you know this, Heidi. So I'm going to hold it and pinch it and use my index finger to push up. So look, you just hold it right there. And so just if you have, like, before I continue pushing, 
you can see some of the scratches still there. You guys see that? So again, if that's the case, give yourself some more compound and go in for the kill. Kind of hold it there. Oh yeah, so now you guys see that. You guys see this, what I did? Hold on. You guys see how cleaner that is? So there, boom, we got that section. Next, now we're gonna go to the two, section two. And so the second you touch it, you'll get this kind of a look to it, kind of something like this. You guys see how it's still not clean? So you guys can put a little bit more compound on it, just hold it there, kind of feed it in there, and then kind of bring it all together. But you shouldn't be getting any scratches at this stage. You guys see how even that is? Oh my heavens, isn't that delicious? Ooh la la. So the only thing you should be seeing here is these fine, and I've got really high camera and high lighting, so you can really see those fine little rub marks. In person, yeah, really high resolution. In person, those are really hard to see. You really see like this in person. You know, you get kind of get this look. But under the camera, you can see these little fine rub marks. I'm trying to catch the camera angle. So yeah, so let's keep going. So now we're running into the three third section. And so the lighter, so the quick lighter touch you, you're just gonna lightly touch it, kind of give yourself some good pressure not heavy amount of pressure, but you should be able to get this. See how there's no more scratches there? Uh-huh. And then you, you see how there's just fine rub marks, but those are okay. If you see anything you need to touch up, you're fine. You can always change those rub marks too. You know, kind of give yourself a little zhuzh, kind of uh, freak out. And you guys can get rid of a rub mark. Do you guys see that, how I kind of faded it away? Just do a little zhuzhing action, a little roly-poly action. So here we go. That's the fourth section. So you got to hold it there and work it. Try to keep it flat. You don't want to create any kind of divots or lines or any kind of grooves. So you guys kind of work it like that. You guys see that? So you have a nice disc, even disc. Trying to not get the glare. The glare is really powerful. So you guys see that, what I did? No, so I don't know if you need to clean the surface, but do you have, but you shouldn't uh, like the surface of your felt, but if there shouldn't be any scratches. So you guys gotta know that this felt goes through a really fine uh, refining process where any kind of fine little particles get removed um, this is New Zealand uh, wool, so it's really high quality, and they treat the little sheep perfectly. I love them. So there could be some kind of metal particles in it, and I always say you're going to do, if you want to sand it down, I'll show it again. Go ahead, turn the jewel tool on. Uh, honestly, wow, that looks so good. Honestly, you just take a little piece of wood. Where's my wood? I don't know. I'll use my, I'll use my, uh, what's it called? What do you call this? The tongue from my bench and just go like this and just kind of hold it there even. Just kind of clean it, sand it down just lightly. And then you'll end up having this, it'll look like this. Just a little, so it'll look a little on the fluffy side. You see how it's not shiny? Fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. Yes. So fuzzy side. And then Go back and give yourself a good amount of compound, and it should look like this. You guys see that, how even that is? And then when you are working on something, it should have a nice, you know, pot finish. Hold on, let me show you guys. You guys see how that works? So it'll be really clean. You wouldn't even have any kind of compound issues. You see that? So, and this is what it looks, I just wanna show you what it's gonna look like after. So you see how it starts to get that sheen again? You kinda want that sheen to start building up. So there, there you go. Okay, I hope that helps. And oh, you guys, if you guys missed the steak video, that was on Tuesday's show? Is that Tuesday? 
So we took this railroad stake and we polished it and ground it all on the jewel tool. This is all done on this little machine right here. Okay, so I thought I'd throw that in there only because I saw it right here. <laughs> it's literally right here peeking at me. Hello. So I thought I glanced down and I saw it. So I thought I'd show that. So you guys, back to the bezel. My pink one's on the floor somewhere. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's segment. Um, Heidi, again, if you're having issues with the felt, you know where to find me. Just send me an email or text me and I'll get that going for you. You're welcome, Heidi. Thank you. So um, I appreciate you all for uh, all you guys watching. So remember, the flex shaft is on sale and I'll be having my little mini mini felt cones up soon and just remember you guys all these felt bobs are not the same the quality so that's the flux shaft it's usually 159 it's on sale for wow it's pretty good 139 um and i just want to say so we'll have these up because i know some of you guys are going to want but i just want you to know something all felts are not the same um the felt that i carry is always going to be a very high quality felt um, which will then translate to a very fine, high polish. Again, like I said, not all felt goes through a fine, uh, like a refining process where they uh, filter out and sift out all the impurities. So a lot of people at JCK, you know that big jewelry show, you know, I'll polish something and these guys, these jewelers will hold a loop. Where's my loop? What happened to my loop? Oh, here it is. So I'll polish something and they'll hold a loop and they'll be like, oh, very nice. What they're doing is they're checking to see if there's any scratches created by the felt wheel. Yeah, so that's what they want to see. They want to see the quality. So I just want you guys to know, I am a jeweler and I'm one of those psycho jewelers that need perfection above perfection like I need the ultimate perfection and so my felt I can assure you will deliver that so I just want you guys to know that all felt is not the same <laughs> yes no so Janice said that's a great question she said she accidentally used her stone felt on metal so what she means is she did this but I've showed this, how to repair this. So she grabbed, she had the, the stone felt, which does not have any kind of metal particles, and she used it on metal by accident. So whenever you're going to use metal, it'll turn black. So what you're going to do, Janice, is do that same technique that I just showed you with the sandpaper on a block of wood and sand it off. You're still going to have a like a hint of gray ring and I did this when I polished a cloisonne piece on glass and there's one of my felt hold on where is this ha huh, here you go this is what it's going to look like you guys see how there's a hint of a gray ring this is okay as long as you've gotten the majority of the metal particles out you're clear I mean if you guys I've done this I've used this for a whole week and it won't translate onto your stone, I assure you. So don't worry, Janice, about cleaning the this to super, super snow white. It's okay. Promise you. You don't have to buy another felt wheel. I'm sure other people would tell you, sure, buy another felt wheel. I'm here telling you it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And they're really thick, so they'll last you a long while. So after a while, it will get back. Yeah, thank you so much. I really do try, you guys. Thank you for counting on me to get the best materials. I really do my best. Um, so eventually, yours will become Snow White again after a few sanding. It'll be fine. Um, but just don't go crazy if you still have a ring of gray. I just want you to know that. It's okay. It's all good in the hood. Um, secondly, oh, you guys, when you guys mentioned that I always bring you the best, I just want you to know that um, my diamond bits with all the ball tips, the 30 piece set, will be here soon. Like I told you, I made sure the quality had to be top notch. So this time I really aimed for really high end quality. 
so as they say, it's really <laughs> a good quality set, but can be very affordable. So that's the thing, you guys. You don't want to over um, make something expensive. Some people tell me, oh, wow, well, you're going to give a whole 30-piece set for around $20 in that quality? I'm like, yeah, I am. But they're like, wow, you can charge that quality for like 50-something dollars. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. So you guys, not only do I aim for the best quality, I aim for the best price. I do my best, but 3M sometimes throws me a uh, roadblock. I am, uh, I only have so much wiggle room with those people. But for the most part, you guys, I really truly do my best. And I thank you, and I appreciate that you guys take notice. Thank you so much. And I think that, um, oh, I know what I was going to say. Someone mentioned, I don't know who you are, I can't remember, but I'll find you, mentioned that they got their new um, uh, visor for their jewel tool, okay? And they said it's hitting. I don't know what it's hitting, first of all. It's hitting something. I don't know. Is it hitting your spindle? It shouldn't. You should have enough clearance. No, there was another person just yesterday. Not the hitting the buff and the brushes. It's something new. Yeah, it's something new. Yeah, so if that's... Yeah, so if if your spindle is too high, it will hit the, the visor. But the, 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 the spindle mo uh, always should be lower than the visor. You can see how my finger fits in there just fine without the visor moving. Um, and the disc goes on. If that's the case... Yes, yeah, so I'm going to show them how to check the height of the spindle. Not everyone knows how to do that, Yaro. Oh, okay. So Kristen just looked at your picture. The hood is not snapped in all the way, but either way, I'm going to show you guys how to drop your spindle if you have a very high spindle. Um, all you do, there's an Allen key that came in your machine kit. I don't have one here. Do I have an Allen key? No, that's a small one. Yeah. Yeah, can you give me an Allen key? So right down here, you guys, if you zoom in, you, are, you can see there's a little um, screw. And it's like it's a set screw. It, so you don't want to ever pull this entire screw out. But do you see how you see the height of my spindle? This is where you should be. You shouldn't be resting on the base, but it should be just slightly elevated. So thank you, Kristen. So right here is the Allen key. You just go like this and twist. Do you guys see how I lightly open it? You don't want to take the screw out all the way. You just loosen it because once this all comes out, this is a tiny little set screw and you'll lose it. So here, yeah, hold on. So this will just go up and down. So you just don't want to remove it. So all you wanted to do is just push it down and just give it a little height. Hold on. Do you guys see how that goes? Right there. That's a perfect spot and then you just tighten it. No, I don't. I don't want you to take. No, I'm not gonna pull the spindle off because I don't want you guys to pull the spindle off. I just want you to elevate it or lower it. That's all you're gonna do with it. That's it. No, y'all was like, show them that there's a flat spot on the motor shaft so that they can put the set screw. You don't need to know any of that. Don't take off your spindle. Just either lift it up or bring it down. That's all we're gonna do. Up, down, up, down. That's all. Okay, you guys. I think. So I just, that's my main goal, you guys. I really want to address any issues that you guys are having uh, while I have your the uh, captivated eyes. Ah, someone asked, Marianne asked. Marianne asked. This is a good question. If you guys are about to leave my show, stay tuned because this is something I'm going to show you guys. It's very important. She just asked if the spindle wears. Is there anything you can do? Do you repair? Do you replace the spindle? What do you do? I'm going to tell you guys, you don't need to replace the spindle. But this is going to be after years of using the jewel tool. Like, we're talking years. So whenever something like this happens, where you'll see that the discs, for some reason, are not, not locking on. You see how quick that locked on right there? That locked on. But let's say that it just continues to spin. I don't have one that continues to spin, but you get what I mean. That means it's not grabbing. So what you're going to do, you guys, you're going to grab a hand metal file. No, that's not a good one. I think I had one. I don't know what I did with it. 
uh, a metal file. Hold on, let me see if I have one, you guys. Give me a second. I hate files, so... Oh, give me one second, you guys. I'm going to try to find something that speaks to y'all. Oh, here. Here's one. So this is just a metal file. I, I broke it to travel with when I go to shows, just so you guys know. Yeah, and then and if you don't have a big one, even these small little ones, Yara, can you do it? Uh, let me pan out. Hold on. Yeah, it's okay. So this is a larger, this is the one that you put on a, like, larger like this. I actually broke it. So it's one of these. Um, but I broke it so I can travel with it if I needed it. Because you can't go through security with a large one. But you know you can go through with it as long as it's under 7 inches. <laughs> so you know. Or if you have a little metal one. A lot of you guys have these little doodad ones. So our objective is is to start at the tip. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Okay, you guys see that? Okay, I don't see that. But so you got you're gonna find a little spot. You're gonna find a little spot on your um hold on. <laughs> We're having okay. So you guys see how I've kind of just rested it on one of the top threads? And the same would go for the larger one. You just would hold it right there. I'll do the small one because I feel like a lot of you guys have the small um and so while the I'm going to turn it on and it's going to spin. But while it's spinning, I'm almost going to pull this uh, file towards me and push down. So push down and pull towards you. So the objective is to file the threads to be sharp. You want to uplift a burr. You, wanna, uh, you want it to be sharp. You don't want it to be smooth. So I'm going to turn it on slowly. Look. And you're going to feel it already going to drop. And so you're going to pull it towards you. Okay, see that? Well, no, it'll drop immediately. But I'm pulling this towards me so I create a pull. And so if you guys can see, I actually brightened it up. And it, that's how you sharpen it. So you might need one or two passes like this. Here, I'll do it again. So find your spot. And so I'm going to pull it towards me as it's spinning, you guys. Just like this. Because I want to create a burr. So while it's spinning, watch. I'm gonna it's gonna wanna pull it away from you and you're gonna pull it towards you. And there you go. And now it's really sharp. I mean it just liven it up and it already will grab that fast. See that? I didn't even twist. So if you guys always wanna know, you go like this and it's on. <laughs> People always ask, why is that wheel not fli uh, flying off? I'm like if I tell you, the guy kill you. And they always laugh. <laughs> I, or I say, yeah, I don't. I say ancient Chinese secret back in my younger days. We used to say that. Um, so, you guys, I hope these little tips helped. Um, ask me any more questions. I'll be happy to answer. So tomorrow, you guys, I'll put some good things together for tomorrow. Probably sharpening or cleaning up that, that this weird, th this, uh, what is this called? The shear cutter. This is a shear cutter. This cuts metal shear, metal uh, sheets. So I'll probably sharpen this and more. Um, and tomorrow is Friday, Friday giveaway. So we'll be giving away something really exciting. Um, and so, so stay tuned tomorrow, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm ready to hear all, you see all your posts, your before and afters. I'm re I'm, I, I follow the hashtag, I love my jewel tools. So Whatever you guys post, if you forget to tag me, don't forget, just use the I love uh, my jewel tool hashtag and I'll find you. You best believe it. I'll do my best to find you. And then that way I can share you guys with the rest of the world. I love sharing your work. I love sharing your testimony. Um, it's also a good way to um, kind of empower other uh, people who are interested in the jewel tool, who are a little bit scared and timid, but you know it's the best thing for them because they're doing things in the hard way. So um, that's all. Um, I love someone <laughs> said, I don't know, you guys. I've been uh, thinking about getting this jewel tool. Do you guys think it's worth it? Oh, my God. I just want to say thank you to everyone. When I say everyone, I want to say everyone for joining, jumping in on that bandwagon and telling her, a hundred percent. I think Nicole Richie was the first to say it. 
So you guys, thank you so much for the support. And don't forget, share your work with I Love, uh, I Love, I Love My Jewel Tool hashtag. You can find me on Instagram. I'm Ani Jewel Tool on Instagram. I respond to everything I post. So you can uh, post on Instagram and tell me who you are. You guys, I know you on Facebook with your name, but then Facebook, you guys create these funky bubble monkey lucky lucky names <laughs> and I'm like wait is that you cat remember Kat? I did that cat sent me a message and I'm like wait cat is this you she's like yeah because her name was you know something different um, so thank you guys so much so I uh, follow me on Instagram too if you guys haven't done so so I can follow w your work and share um, I'll see you guys here tomorrow for Friday giveaway Ah, thank you, Heidi. Heidi says, I hope your camera department has a wonderful birthday. Yes, so I'll be doing some work here today. I'll be sure to email uh, Rich at Fordham to get all that stuff I needed. Um, and if there's anything else you want to see, just let me know and I'll get it. Um, and we'll be off celebrating a birthday today. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'm Ani from Jewel Tool saying I'll see you guys here tomorrow. Bye for now.